Today at Blade HQ, we're looking at a whole bunch of automatic knives. The action is always spot on, and they just, they nail it. This is kind of the quintessential automatic knife. If you're on a budget, I would recommend this one right out of the gate. What is up, guys? Today at Blade HQ, we're looking at a whole bunch of automatic knives. Zach, what's the plan today? The plan today is to put together an automatic knife buyer's guide. So what we've got is we've got some budgets, some classics, some super commons, and then some dark horses when it comes to your automatic knives. I love it. What's the first one on the list? First one on the list, uh, of course, right? If we're talking budget, you got to go Boker Kalashnikov. Beautiful. So, great, great little knife. Everybody's got to have one of these, I think. Throw me the throw me the mini Kalashnikov. Oh wait. yeah, the mini. So this comes in two different varieties, guys. It's AUS8 steel. These usually run about forty bucks, and uh, you can see the size comparison. This is kind of the quintessential automatic knife. If you're on a budget, I would recommend this one right out of the gate, Boker Kalashnikov, to see if you even like it. Um, yeah. Get a sense of like, do I want to spend more money on an auto or do I want to just use a $40 one? These come in tons of different styles. And the next one on the list actually looks a little bit like it. It's the SCH60 from Schrade. Also very snappy. The difference between this one has a glass breaker here on the end. Uh, it also has that deep carry pocket clip, and they've thrown a lock here on the back. So one thing about automatic knives, some have locks, some do not. Uh, so if you're shopping for an auto, uh, you may want to take that into consideration. Is that important to you or not? Um, personally, I've never had an auto go off in my pocket, um, but some people like the peace of mind. So Yeah, so I actually, we're going to talk about a knife on the table, have a story about with the lock. Okay. So Ooh, I'm excited for, for that. Later. <laughs> I'm excited for we'll that. We'll get there. Uh, but next up, we've got the Boker Magnum, and this is the Tonto version with partial serration. Uh, this one runs right around 24 or 25 bucks. Uh, again, as we always say, whatever's on the website, but that's basically what it runs for yep. most of the time. But again, just a great little knife. It's great if you're wanting to get an auto and you're not quite sure if you're into the auto game yet. These are all great knives to jump in to and start with. start with to see if you even like the action to see if you like aluminum the handle on that one. Yep, aluminum handle. So the ones from Boker, the Kalashnikov, as well as that one, all have aluminum handles. The Strade has a polymer handle. Yep. So next one on the list is the Boker Strike. Again, so one thing I love about this Boker Strike, the uh, spring in it is actually new, and so if you watch that spring come out of there. It's just snappy. It is snappy. It is snappy. So snappy. In fact, yeah. here, let's put it by the microphone. Mm. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah. For Love a forty dollar knife, like that's that's Absolutely. nice and snappy. Absolutely. So this one also has a lock on it right there. And one thing I like about the lock on this one is it's in a very convenient place versus the Strade is kind of here on the back. So you're kind of fiddling with a lock in a weird location. Like meh. Whereas this guy is right there where you'd put your thumb to open it. So kind of a one-step motion there. Boker Strike. I like that. And the handle on this one, is this a polymer or a G10? I think, I think it's a polymer. That one is a polymer, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yep. Polymer. So kind of feels like G10, though. If you were to copy G10 in a polymer, they've done a good job here. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's got the feel for sure. Yep. Next up, we've actually kind of got a family here. So we've got the Launch family. Oh, I love it. So we've got the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, and the seven. And so what we're gonna do with these guys is we're, they're all CPM 154 uh, yep. for blade steel. What we wanna do is we wanna show you guys kind of the different look and feel of each one of these. Yep. So I guess let's dive into it. Let's do it. So yeah, so there's the launch one. Uh, again, one CPM 154 steel, great little knife, great blade shape. Uh, and these are budget classics, I think, yeah, right? Like I'd agree with that. Th this is like, you know you wanna get an auto, you know you like an auto, maybe you've already had a Kalashnikov, this is the next place to go. Yeah, These absolutely. launches are awesome. Absolutely, keep your hand there. Okay, I'm just gonna pull it out of your hand. Okay. We're gonna cut here, Matthew. <laughs> just jump cut these, Matthew, that's the thought here. So Zach, now that you've seen them all, which one is your favorite? Uh, I think my favorite's the four. Yeah? Yeah, and the reason mm -hmm. is, is it's just a good little box cutter. Yeah. I know a lot of guys who carry it, I don't need a Cali Legal Blade, but I know a lot of guys who carry it and they just use it for box cutter and they love it. Nice. So, yep, four. I think my favorite, continual favorite with the launch series, I love the four, I think it's cool, but the lines on the two, I just think are really beautiful. I think the backspacer is amazing. All of these come in that uh, that beautiful Ben Blue that I just find irresistible. 
Um, so get this one in a blue. And you got to get think, a patent on that, man. I know. <laughs> patent pending. <laughs> All right, guys, there's the launch series. By the way, we have made a video on that entire series. It'll be linked up there in the card. So feel free, if you're looking for a launch, we kind of go in depth on more of that. So we'll have more of these knives coming up after the commercial break. Guys, since you've gotten this far in the video, let me tell you about a new automatic on the market. This is the BRS Warhead. Cool new knife from Blade Runner Systems. Now they're known for their ballet song knives and this is their first foray into automatic knives. Works extremely well, it's a beautiful piece. Check it out in the link in the description below. All right guys, welcome back and we're gonna dive into what else we have on the table. But first we gotta dive into what's in my pocket. Hmm. <laughs> So we've got the... Uh, that was gross. Yeah, you like that? A <laughs> little bit of pocket <laughs> you, came out with you it. you got a real pocket. No big deal. <laughs> uh, Protec the Magic Whiskers uh, is the next one up. This one runs about 200-ish, depending on what the deal is. Now you might notice this one's a little beat up. That's because me and Ben have actually been uh, using this. We've had it in our pocket for the last couple weeks. And uh, to be honest, it didn't look like this when Ben handed it to me. So Does it, it is clean up? It is called the Magic. Let's find out. Whoa. <laughs> Enhance 5719. Track 45 left. Stop. <laughs> there it is, guys. It cleans up really nicely. We were actually talking about this before off camera. Yeah. We said, is this thing going to clean up? And it has. Yeah. I'm. Uh, as everybody knows, I'm a hard use guy. I was a little worried that I kind of messed it up. <laughs> Turns out. We're okay. <laughs> okay, so where did you carry it, Zach? Uh, so I carried, well, I carried it, uh, some construction projects I've been working on. I'm actually building a booth for the upcoming Blade Show. Keep an eye out what we got going for Blade Show. And so I've been using it over there to build stuff and nice. things like that. The reason it's called the magic yeah. <laughs> is because the way that you open it, you might notice there's no release button here, is you actually slide this bolster right here. Boom. So you can kind of see, and that's actually how you close it as well. So carrying it around was actually a lot of fun for me because I would hand it to all my buddies nice. who some of them know some things about knives, some of them don't. They're all pretty mechanical though, yeah. good with their hands. And uh, none of them could really figure it out. <laughs> I was like- and you, and you would sit there and gloat. Oh yeah, they'd kind of like pull it. <laughs> and then I would try to open it so they couldn't see me using the bolster yeah. and they'd be like, how'd you do that? So kind nice. of a fun knife, but uh, found good use out of it. Parlor tricks. Yeah, parlor yeah. tricks. Yeah. Uh, 154 uh, CM steel, blade blade steel, so held, held in it's just fine for everything nice. I was using. But nice. yeah, great little knife. Solid. Next one on the list is the Protec TR3. This is kind of a classic Protec, opens with the button right there. And uh, the thing about Protec, just so, so snappy. Yeah, it, and we've solid. said this before, but when you get a Protec, it doesn't matter which one it is, you know it's a Protec. Yep. Like, just the way it feels, you just know it's a Protec. The, the action is always spot on, and they just, they nail it, yep. so. Protect TR3 on that one. Zach, I left this one for you because- I'm so glad I ended up being This is like your grail knife that I, you haven't purchased yet. I purchased it for three other people, but okay, I keep spending I keep spending my buck, <laughs> my, this is buck 110 automatic. I keep spending my buck 110 auto money on other people on a, instead of myself. You have a good heart. Yeah, so I guess. Like you I don't, don't have a buck 110. I don't have a buck, an auto buck 110, which is, I love this knife. Nice. So yeah, so auto buck 110, it's got uh, 420 HC blade steel, just a good little knife, nice and snappy. Nickel comes brass with the, bolsters, right? Yep, nickel brass, brass bolsters. Comes with a uh, leather sheath, yep, which I'm way sheath. into. I love that. And uh, something that a lot of people hate about this knife, but I actually really love, is so it's an auto, so you you hit it here to open it, right? But you don't, that's not how you close it. I hate that. I love it. I hate it. I love it. You close it with the lock back, and it's Ugh. just, there's just something about it. Like every heritage, sing, I don't know, I just love it. Every single other auto on the table, <laughs> save the Adamas, right. opens and closes with the same button. And then I the buck has to do I don't know why. Lock. I think it's absurd. I just love it. What do you guys I love think? It. Let us know. I think <laughs> yeah, it's let us know in the totally comments. Absurd. Yeah, it drives me crazy. It's fun. And and <laughs> every time I go to close it, do you know what I do? Is I push that. You push the button. button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let I me close move it. my hands. <laughs> no. So the three people I've given it to, one of them was my dad, and then two were a uh, friend and an uncle. Uh, the people that I've given it to, none of them specifically asked for it. Yeah. And all three of them love that as well. So maybe it's just it's a, it's a heritage thing. It's a heritage thing. I think as far as a heritage thing, it's great. Yeah. As far as a do what everyone else is doing. Right. Normal operation. Right. I hate it. Whatever. <laughs> Benchmade CLA is next on the list. This is a classic auto in my mind. Um, G10 handle. You got a lock on there. Snappy action. USA made. Comes with Benchmade's. Uh, I think they call it their Life Sharp warranty. Yeah. They'll sharpen it for you forever. Tune it forever. Great warranty. So I love the CLA. I love the fact that the handle's pretty neutral. It's just gonna mm -hmm. great little knife. So 
That yeah, and comp composite light auto is what CLA stands for. I always for. wondered that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when I said that, I thought, I wonder what CLA stands yeah, for because I said it a million times. Composite light auto, and it's and it and it is true. Like it, it's it's a nice yeah. feeling knife, and again with how neutral it feels, it's great. I think this knife is the antithesis of the next knife. <laughs> yeah, that's very the true. The Benchmade Adamas. Yeah, this thing is a brute. This thing is a brute. Let's make sure it's unlocked because I always forget to unlock it. Boom! This thing is snappy. It kicks like a mule. It kicks like and it a mule. It has to. Look how big that blade is. Yeah, it is. Like, it's just a huge, hard use knife. Yeah. Like just plain and simple. Um, same thing comes with the Life Sharp warranty from yep. Benchmade. Um, great knife. And if you're if you got a big hand or you find that you're using your knives a lot with a glove, great knife. Yeah, for that. solid. And so. it, it's got that back lock on it too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it has so you this... can actually lock it in place or lock it um, closed. As exactly. Well. And this is, again, this is this one thing, of the ones... Every time this thing gets me. There it is. There, there you go. go. <laughs> like I mentioned, this is one of the few that doesn't open with the actual press of a button. Yeah. You're, you're using that axis lock to open it right. Whoa, hit the table. Yep. <laughs> That's mine. Claim it. So, cool knife. But uh, you look at the, I mean, even the thickness on those yeah. two. Yeah, it's a, it's a brute, man. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Next one on the list, the Microtech LUDT. Kind of a standard Microtech design at this point in my mind. Um, steel on this particular one is LMAX. You got an aluminum handle and just a nice push button auto. And again, we're kind of into the spendy territory. This one's gonna run you about 225 currently on Blade HQ. Those prices always change, so check the site for the actual price right now. But uh, LUDT, great little knife. Yeah. Um, well designed, not a lot of frills to it. Just a good piece. Yeah, and as far as reliability, actional, it's everything you expect yep. from Microtech. Yep. So, great knife. Awesome. Next. So next up, this is the Gerber Auto Covert. So you got on this one, you've got the partially serrated blade, uh, deep carry pocket clip, and pretty nice snappy action. Yeah. Um, definitely it f uh, feels a little more of a, maybe a self-defense knife. Sure. Right? It's a little more geared in that direction, but uh, great knife. Feels good. And this one also has the lock that we've noticing um, on certain knives. On some. Yep. Deep carry pocket so. clip on this thing too. Yep. Zach and I had this, or maybe it was Andrew, I can't remember, we had this conversation about pocket clips because I always bring up pocket clips on knife banter. And it's funny because pocket clips are important. They're very important They're to very me. important. And so when it's got a deep carry clip, like you kind of find what you like in a pocket clip. And if it doesn't have that, it annoys me. Yeah. And if it's got fanciness on the pocket clip, I'm not a fanciness on pocket clip kind of guy. Yeah. Um, I should mention too, the uh, mini covert, you got the covert oh, yeah. and mini covert. So just a size comparison between the two of those. So if you are looking for a covert, uh, you can see those there. With and the recessed screws on there, yeah. on, the, on the pocket clip. You love the recessed screws on the pocket clip? It's a clip. nice detail, man. <laughs> it's a nice little thing that says, we thought about this. And then between the two, not only are you uh, changing a little bit in size, but obviously there's a price difference as well. Yeah. So the mini comes in right around 135 Nice, so. nice. Next on the list, the Gerber 06 Auto. And uh, just classic knife, we did an entire video on this knife exclusively. So if you haven't seen that one, we'll link to that as well down in the description box. But uh, great knife, kind of a military grade machine. I, I mean, you look yeah. at these two, just chunkers. Yep. Just big fat chunkers. Yeah, they're both so. meant to just be abused. Yep, beat on things. And we should mention glass breakers too. This one's got a glass breaker. Uh, and then that straight down at the end yeah. also had a glass breaker. So if you are looking for a glass breaker, that's a feature that you're gonna want to pay attention to. Now we got mailbag, guys. This is this is probably the most exciting mailbag of all time. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a, maybe that's an overstatement. <laughs> oh, our friend Thomas sent us an email. I'm just gonna read it to you, and I think we need some sad, sad music. <laughs> he says the knife banter videos are always interesting and fun. I can tell that Zach likes knives, but the guy on the left, the viewer's left, that's me. Yeah, that's you. Does not. Even though he is the live wire on the shows, his dislike of knives is just too much. Perhaps you could find another guy who appreciates knives to fill the spot. So, I think we've got an opening. Uh, I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep. Accepting applications. Do you know what's funny about this? I emailed Thomas and I said, Thomas, give me a call, man. Yeah. He never called me. Oh, bummer. Thomas. Bummer. Yeah. Here's the deal, guys. Um, you actually got me thinking, Thomas, and I appreciate this. I think we need to do my knife collection. Yeah, I what think so. What do you guys so. think? Should we do Ben's knife collection? I think so. I, I collect knives in a weird way and I actually give away more knives than I collect. Which, eventually that seems, you would, you right, would have right. a deficit. <laughs> but uh, knives come to me, they just, they land here. Right. And they become mine. <laughs> so, I think eventually, Thomas, we need to talk about my knife collection because that will give you some insight into 
how I do or don't collect knives. So let us know in the comments if you want to see my knife collection. Thomas, big heart. And guys, we get a lot of comments on YouTube. Some of them are pretty harsh. And uh, this one though, this cut Ben a little bit. It did, so it got under my leave, skin for like leave, three days. Leave Ben some love down in the comments too. Let us know, do you want to see his knife collection? Leave a little bit of love. Thomas cut me deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, uh, so this is from the Bowie Knife video yep. that we recently put up, Bowie Knife for Survival. Uh, it was a fun collaboration video we did with some other YouTubers. Check it out, it's awesome. And somebody commented, the Todd commented, I hope Tim picked up all those peanuts. And uh, <laughs> Which, I was just gonna explain, Tim actually told me when he, when he handed off the knife, he's yeah. like, threw all these packing peanuts all over the forest. And he's like, there was snow, I couldn't even find them. Tim is gonna go back in the spring and pick them up. That's where he <laughs> always goes. Um, sustainable stewardship is part of what we do. So yeah. Tim will clean those up. And if he doesn't, Tim will come after We're you. We're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we had a poll on the last video we put out and uh, we asked, how do you pronounce um, this name of the knife? And you guys answered the question and you can see the results here. Clearly, uh, the top one won. The top one won, for sure. I'm pretty sure that was pronounced Bui Bui. Yeah, Bui Bui. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fun little piece there. All right, guys, now we have our Dark Horses section of the knife banter. Okay. Go ahead, Zach. And by Dark Horses, what we mean is maybe something you haven't considered before, maybe something that's a custom, uh, that type of thing. So, what we've got first is the Piranha Bodyguard. So, this is Piranha Bodyguard, obviously, automatic. Great little knife. And I'm kind of falling in love with Piranha. I feel like mm. I need to I need to go grab some off the shelf and like oh, look yeah. at them deeper. We made a video on those one day. Yeah, I handled all of them. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well so I, I wanna I wanna experience the piranha a little bit more. But anyways, this particular one, uh, it's got S30V steel blade, uh, nice pocket clip, and really neat finish. And this is something piranha does, and this is actually why I'm kind of crushing them a little bit. Is their their designs are they're good. They feel good, but yeah. they're a little unique. Not they, too unique. They've kind of got this unique. weird finish and they, yeah. they do like this speckled, like even this one has this green and black speckle. Yeah. Not quite my jam. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's like, normally I wouldn't, but something about these guys, that just, you I don't know it. what it is. You I, want it, you gotta Yeah, I it. want it. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna Fair try enough. to add one of these to the collection. Um, and then just to show you guys, just everything they do has just got some style to it. This is the bag that the knife comes in. It's kind of so. your style. It's like yeah. slurpee, Slurpees and pizza style. Slurpee and pizza style a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Hot rods and motorcycles, like that it. type of thing. Yeah, so absolutely. anyways, Piranha, uh, bodyguard, great little knife. Next on the list, guys, is the SOG Tack. That's not entirely accurate. And uh, again, this is kind of a classic auto in my mind. Um, it wasn't in our top, top sellers, so we kind of threw it in at the end, but also a really good one. One thing I like about this one, really thin. Mm -hmm. So if you compare this to this uh, Shred SCH60, look how thin that SOG tack is. It also has that lock on the back, deep carry clip, and they're very snappy. So. Yeah, they are. And then we had to throw in a, we had to throw in an expensive one. Yeah. Just just because. Yeah, we had to throw in an expensive one. So this is the Brian Teague the Brian Ty, is Ty. How that's sorry. actually pronounced. I know Ty, yeah. Ty, Ty, sorry. But if you're reading Brian, it, it looks like Yeah. Teague. Sorry, I was reading it. <laughs> Brian Ty, this is the custom tie breaker, is what the the name of it is. Should we tell them the price? Twelve, yeah. twelve hundo dollars. Twelve hundo. So yeah. damo steel, damo steel blade. Um, it's got, sorry guys, uh, titanium, titanium handle. Yeah. I was make, I was just making sure. Titanium handled, shaped really in a in a. It's got a lot of shape and contour to it. it Brian Ty, <laughs> what you have to understand is this is a man that has made his own knife T-shirt fabric and had like this classy shirt made out of it. Like yeah. this is a guy that eccentric is like what he does. And I think this knife really shows who Brian Ty is. Um, if you put this knife next to him, you're like, uh-huh. Yeah, it all makes sense. <laughs> this works. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Nicely yeah. done, Brian. And then the last one, kind of in our dark horse category, is in my pocket. And I've been carrying this the last couple of days. It's the Hogue, ooh. Hey look, you brought the pocket out with pocket you too. <laughs> We usually clean everything beforehand, but if it's coming out of our pocket... It's coming out of my pocket, yeah. Absolutely. So this is the Hogue Micro Switch. What's the story behind this one, Zach? Uh, so we actually went and did a uh, tour of Hogue's factory and had a bunch of ventures, uh, adventures surrounding the, that knife. Yeah. So this is the Micro Switch, and I actually took this hitchhiking for a couple days on the nice. road. So we actually have some footage of that. We can roll here. And uh, yeah. 
it's a, it's, it's a great it's little got thing. That thing. Yeah, this is the thing. the thing. I actually say this. Uh, the video isn't out yet, but it'll come out in May sometime. So make sure to check it out, guys. I actually say this in my review of it. I'm like, Ben's gonna love it when I bring yeah, this I, home. I love the size of this one. <laughs> um, it's it's right in that range, right at about three inches, right under three inches that I yep. love. Um, so I carried you carried this for a while, and then you handed yep. it off to me. I carried it for the last week. One qualm. Okay. The pocket clip. It's got this. Funky curly Q, Q See, underneath it. Yeah, I saw you struggle with it yesterday. I've struggled the day too. Yeah, I didn't have any. Pro it was in my pocket for yeah. like four or five days on the road, hard use, and like never, never caught my pants. Yeah, maybe it's just your pants. It could just be. It's my probably pants. those roses you have embroidered on your pocket. <laughs> it's probably the roses and just the really tight fit. I mean, yeah, it's, you the really, really gotta tight force those <laughs> those pocket clips into the pocket. So no, no, but that, I can see how that could be a problem with certain well, other pants. Than that, I, haven't had any I really like this line. one. Yeah, I, think I it's do really too. Nice. It's really snappy, so. and I beat the crap out of that thing. And it's not in bad shape either. No, like yeah, it, did, it did its thing. And not only did I beat the crap out of it, but the the guys I hitchhiked with, I had them use it as well. Yeah. So it got it got some good use. Nice. So here comes my story for the about locks and automatics. Yeah. I always thought it was stupid. I was like, why do you need to lock an automatic? It's dumb. Yeah. Like it's not going to open your pocket, right? Unless you're buying like some cheap garbage at the gas station, sure. right? But I ended up sleeping out one night while I was hitchhiking. I slept in a pipe in, in Beaver, Utah. Like I said, watch the video. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> it was nice and warm. Anyways, and uh, when you sleep out like that, you want to make sure your pocket knife's close. You just never know, right? Like yeah, just, just to feel safe. So I always keep my pocket knife in my pocket so I sure. know exactly where to find it, right? Like you sure. don't wake up and can't find your knife. And uh, I went to bed with this in my pocket, and I was like, man, I hope that doesn't go off my pocket, because when you sleep, weird things happen. Of course. And I was like, oh wait, it has a lock. Boop. Boom. It locked it. So I actually, That's it converted me. I was like, nice. eh, lock on an auto, I can now see their use for it. Nice. If you're a hobo, <laughs> lock, on, lock on an auto is great. You must have. <laughs> It's hilarious. <laughs> so yeah. Guys, there you have it. That is the Automatic Knife Buyer's Guide. Thank you for watching. If you've watched all to the end, you're a true fan and we love you. You're great. Let's just take a moment. And we do. Yeah. Let that settle in. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we'll have another video coming out for you next week. Thanks for watching. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. Ooh, that was a long one. <laughs> On my way. We just finished. Just finished. Yeah, I apologize. We were, we were in the dregs of a, a video.